her story is, it's, it's like a lot of the kids in Denver Kids, with upheaval and often chaos at home. When I had Janae, I was really young, an experienced mother because I didn't have my mother and I didn't have the love and the comfort that I needed. You know, throughout her extended family, the girls, you know, they start having babies when they're 13, 14, 15 years old. They drop out of school. I did the best I could, but I didn't know how to really love then. When I was three, my dad died. And my brother was like two weeks old, so uh, uh, my mom has had to raise us. At that time, I worked a lot, a lot, day and night. I wasn't sure if I was doing the right thing or if I was a good mother. Why isn't my dad here? And why is my mom always working? And Adelina always wanted to have a father. Being alone is it's, it's hard. It's a whole new grief process when you start hitting adolescence and needing that dad. Every birthday, uh, ever since I can remember, I would always cry. I wish my dad was here, you know. The stats are against her. My dad was in jail, and I mostly was living with my auntie, and like, I would cry for my dad. He was in prison, and I was a single mom, and it was just kind of hard for me to work or to try to go to school and, and take care of her on my own. It just hurts because like I can't see his face, and it's just sad. She went through some pretty hard struggles with me, like living here, living there, you know, and just trying to survive. Sometimes she would have her own problems and it would, she wouldn't be able to be there for me sometimes. I also was incarcerated for a little while. She's been bounced around a lot. It's like a sad feeling, like you're invisible sometimes. It's like nobody can see you, not there. I just want her to have the best now, so if I don't feel like I can do that, that's great that they can all help me get her to where she needs to be. Bye, see you later. If they've got even one little part of their lives that is consistent, it gives them a place to be calm. It gives them a little bit of sense of safety. I think Christina, Denise are very important people in Janine's life because they have been there consistently. Um, they don't break off for weeks at a time or months at a time. No matter what's going on in their lives, here's one part of my life that's safe. Here's one person I know I can count on. You know, when they tell her, okay, well, next weekend we're going to do this and this and this, they follow through. It's not, okay, well, you know, Janine, I couldn't make it, but next week, you know, for sure, 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 we'll be there. People come and go. I've learned that nowadays and uh, it's just nice to have someone to always fall back on you know I could always just call Denise and be like hey you know I'm having problems in school or I need something I need anything and she's always been there for me and I, she's always will be and I know that as Denise I love her and uh, not only because Adelina counselor she's part of this family now it's been so great because I have someone other than my teachers uh, going to school, you know, checking up on me. She was um, more excited to do homework, to play, to talk. I mean, a huge difference, I can tell you. One day she showed up and it was awesome. <laughs> you know, it's like having a second mom. It's, it's awesome. It feels good because you know there's somebody there for you and some families don't have that. As long as she's been in Denver Kids, no matter where she goes, I find her. You know, I'll go to the school where she was and I'll say, oh, she's not here anymore. And when I find her, you know, the look on her face when she sees me, it's like, yes. I think it gives her hope. Yeah. When a kid's face lights up simply because you walk into the room, it means I must be doing something right. Those are the times I think, okay, this is, this is good, I'm doing something right here. Um, so it's just, it's an honor. And I hope that I can live up to what the kids need. It was great, it was really great. Well, it was just a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Well, <laughs> first period we were talking about, um, she has been great and I always told her that what she did for me and that feeling that she gave me 
I would love to give to someone else. We were talking about junior mentors. And, and she said, what is a junior mentor? And I said, well, you know, it's a high school kid, a junior or a senior that can be like a big sister to a, a little one. I said, would you like to do that? She said, I would love to do that. And I said, oh, I have got just the perfect little girl for you. So I started telling her about Esmeralda. She goes, I want to do this. I want her. I want her. When I first got Esmeralda, she was just so happy. And uh, you could just see it in her face. It's just so wonderful watching her pay it forward. I don't know if you could get a feeling like that from anywhere else. I would want to be a mentor because you would have fun with them and go places. And now I see her interacting with her little sister and kissing her, loving her, and singing to her. And it amazes me because I didn't really give her that type of love. So I'm getting the results that I want. Not that I knew how to do, but that I want now. It's really important to be encouraged and to be loved. She has a heart of gold. No matter what's going on in her life, she finds the positive, she's always hopeful. Things are gonna be good this week. <laughs> it's one kid at a time, but if you've made a difference even in one kid's life, you have no idea the ripple effect that that will have. 